Hi everyone, uh, this is Matt Ingenthron with uh, Couchbase. Uh, with me also is... Hey, it's John Zablocki. And? Hi, it's Sergey Fsev. Okay, great guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, so we just started the broadcast, uh, so if you're out there watching the broadcast off the Google Plus page, uh, you can either watch the broadcast uh, live uh, so we'll give it a couple more minutes for other folks to join. And if you have a question, you also have the opportunity to join us on this broadcast. Um, you would do both uh, through the Google Plus page. After this broadcast, uh, everything will be um, archived over on the uh, YouTube uh, Google Video, uh, or I'm sorry, YouTube Couchbase Video page. Uh, so uh, it'll be there for others to have a look at later. So we did have, uh, we do have a number of people that are planning to join according to uh, the page, uh, but only one submitted question, which I guess means we're answering most of the questions already ahead of time. Um, so if you have a question, uh, by all means join and or go ahead and post it to the um, to the posting on the Google Plus page. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up right now and let's see what we have uh, from in terms of questions. One second. Find the right place to pull this up. So one question that's out there, and this one's actually a pretty easy one, from Harim uh, Haik. Apologize if I've mispronounced uh, your last name, Harim, uh, or your first name for that matter. Um, the question is, can we give some advice on when Couchbase 2.0 will be ready for production use? Uh, he'd like to get it uh, up and on board ASAP. So I'm uh, very happy to say that uh, we're uh, on track to ship uh, Catchbase Server 2.0 before the end of the year, uh, and so sometime in the next few weeks, you should be able to uh, download Catchbase Server 2.0 or one of the client libraries. So uh, that's the answer to that question. Let me see if there are any other uh, questions that have come up. No? Oh, okay, yeah, we got another question out there. Uh, question is, uh, can you explain a little how you index views and how I can get a real-time response? Thanks. Um, John, you want to take a, a, a go at that, and then I can help out if uh, I have some thoughts. So, again, question is, this is from Ahmed Janim. The question is, can you explain a little how you index views and how I use how I can use real time response. Uh, sure. So the way our uh, view engine works is you write a, a map reduce function, or you write a map function in JavaScript and optim optionally a reduce function, uh, and that produces an index over which you can query uh, for documents. And the real time uh, answer there would be that you'd have to use your uh, a parameter of the views called stale mode, and basically you can turn off our by default, eventually consistent view model uh, to allow for uh, fully consistent uh, reads that would give you uh, real-time access to your data. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I would mention is uh, that sometimes when people say real-time response, so I'm not, not sure exactly what you're referring to, sometimes they refer to getting a stream of changes. And there is uh, one other um, experimental approach. Look for uh, the, um, the Elasticsearch integration, and you'll see there's a project. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a project that allows you to uh, get to, to basically get a stream of data. That's experimental at this time, but what John said is exactly the right approach, is that we have this uh, set of observe and index querying uh, and you use the, t the combination of the two together and you can uh, query it as much as you need to. Uh, so let me reload the page, see if there are any other questions that have come up. Yeah, so no other questions at the moment. Uh, if you have one, by all means post it there and we'll look back. Um, but let's, uh, let's go on to a couple other uh, cool things. So uh, both John and Sergey came today ready to do some uh, demonstrations. As you might have seen in the posting, Tron Norby is unfortunately not able to join today. He's uh, he's not feeling well, so we'll uh, we'll defer the 
the node demo to uh, to the next hangout that we do, which will probably be in a couple weeks. Um, I don't know. So we're not really organized here. John, Sergey, who wants to go first? Uh, no preference here. Sergey, do you want to go first or second? Uh, maybe uh, I will go first because... Uh, uh, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> hey, Mark. Uh, Hey, is that Tony? Hey. Hey, Tony. So uh, now you know what John looks like, for sure. Uh, so we were just, we were just about to jump into some demos here. So, um, uh, oh, I, I should do some intros. Uh, I'm going to be super quick about this so we can spend some time on demos. Uh, Mark Noonberg um, works in uh, various different places in the client library SDK work authored the Perl client library on his own, does lots on libcatchbase and the Node uh, client library. Tony is actually a, a community contributor, also a user of Couchbase, uh, has helped us out uh, quite a bit in trying to you know, run things down and uh, find uh, where we can do better. So thanks much for, for that, Tony. Uh, so with that, uh, let's uh, turn it over to Sergey, and Sergey will let you... Uh, Sporting a nice uh, winter beard there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see your yeah. demo. Okay, um, I'd like to show you uh, CBC tools. It is a part of uh, LibCouchBase software, a LibCouchBase uh, client. So I'm starting screen share. Okay. So. Uh, Currently, the beta version of LibCacheBase uh, ship uh, a separate package for uh, binary tools, uh, binary executable. It, and uh, on Debian, it will look like uh, this uh, to install uh, sudo apt get install lib, libcouchbase to bin. Uh, after that, uh, you will get a CBC command line, uh, which uh, provide you several commands for uh, inspecting uh, your cluster, or maybe uh, doing some uh, checks, or maybe some scripting. Um, first command is help. Uh, without any arguments, it will show a short help and. Uh, with uh, command argument, it will uh, show uh, all possible options which command accept. For example, let's start from uh, maybe a stats command. Uh, all commands uh, accept uh, a lot of uh, common, common uh, options like uh, host name, bucket, uh, username, password, and so on. Um, stat command will uh, uh, execute stats uh, query to the cluster. By default, it will use um, uh, default bucket on the local host. Oops, I need to create. Sorry, uh, I need to create a bucket. So we we'll, we will start from uh, create bucket command. Uh, bucket create, bucket create. And uh, you can see uh, default uh, options for this command. It will create a cache base uh, bucket with uh, sto uh, 100 megabytes uh, quota and a couple of other default options. So we'll just uh, we'll create user administrator password. Ah, and default. So yeah, uh, I should specify default. Um, you can see uh, that it's, uh, it is successfully created a bucket. So we can uh, query stats. Uh, stats output uh, is uh, three columns uh, separated with tabs. First column is a uh, uh, not uh, address, uh, then uh, Start key and start value. Uh, so you can uh, search through the stats like uh, grip, current items. 
here. So total. You can see that uh, the bucket is empty. Mm. Another comment I, I will show you is how to upload the data to the bucket. Uh, I will use uh, sample data which shipped with uh, uh, with a uh, server itself. Uh, beer sample database docs. There are a lot of uh, JSON files here, so I can uh, iterate through some of them. Uh, like uh, for each F lop CBC, uh, I will use command CP, which like uh, uh, CP Unix command and we'll copy uh, any file into the cluster. CP F into the default bucket. Uh, it started and now we can uh, look uh, at the stats. Ah. Look at the stats here, stats. It shows that uh, the bucket is not empty and a uh, couple of dogs uh, are there. Total of number of files will be three hundreds. Uh, <clears throat> now uh, I can show you another useful comment. Uh, for example, uh, how to make a view request using CBC tool. First, I need to define a simple view function test all, which will just uh, show me all the documents from the from the bucket, and I will publish this function to production. View command accept uh, at least uh, name of the view to execute. So it will be it will look like CBC view. Hey Sergey, uh, we're uh, uh, I don't think we're seeing screen updates from you. Oh, I might too fast. Uh, or maybe stop and restart the screen sharing. I think we've had this issue okay. once before. Uh, where uh, much better. Where was uh, last place? I oh no, uh, you're fine. Go ahead and continue. You published the uh, view, and now yes. you're about ready to run it with the CVC command line tool, right? Yeah. Mm. I should pass a view name uh, to to the view. It will look like uh, design test. View. Oh. Uh, it is should show empty output. Let me check in the UI. Ah, and uh, should be. Ah, okay. It was a lag between uh, memory and disk storage. I can uh, use stale holes to force a index update. Unfortunately, it looks like we're not getting your screen updates again. Yeah. Now better? Nope. <laughs> got a half a gray, uh, got a gray half a screen. Okay. Consistent. Uh, but when I switch off screen share, uh, it Maybe doesn't show in. 
maybe hmm. switch it off for a moment yeah. and then okay now I see you now switch it back on okay so yeah much better okay uh, now I show the output of the view it will just uh, huge JSON value I can reformat it JSON Reformat and pipe it to the less. Okay. Uh, I must uh, redirect the standard error stream. So uh, it, it's just the usual uh, view response uh, without any documents. You can uh, see that value is null because uh, map function emits uh, null as a value. I can uh, easily show you uh, documents include docs two. Now you can see a doc uh, uh, property which contain uh, the, our JSON document and meta information for it. So this is basically all comments I, I'd like to show you now. If you have a question about maybe uh, other comments, I can show you. Very Before. cool. Uh, um, one one more useful uh, comment uh, I need to show for maybe diagnostics in uh, some cases on the server is a hash hash uh, hash function. Mm -hmm. hash, uh, it it uh, accepts uh, any key, for example, uh, foo, and show diagnostic information about uh, which server will. Uh, in charge of this key, which vbucket does it have, and uh, which uh, couch IP, API uh, endpoint, and uh, list all replicas which uh, contain this key. Uh, my uh, bucket uh, configured with single replica, so it is uh, only one here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know in the past we've occasionally had questions about where does a particular key go. And so the CBC hash, it's typically not something you should need to know as an application developer, uh, but yes. sometimes in deployment, uh, or especially for us as client library developers, uh, it's really useful to have a, a tool like that. Um, if I remember yeah. correctly, uh, Sergey, you also have the observe uh, command implemented there in CBC, yes, right? You can, uh, for example, observe the same key. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't exist in the database, so it uh, responds with not found value. For example, I can um, put something the CBC CP uh, the uh, Samsung just uh, AB. Okay, uh, I just put this key there and I can observe it. So it showed me uh, that uh, the key persisted uh, on master uh, node and on the replica. I can try uh, to do it quickly. Maybe with uh, you could delete it and then re-add the same one. So uh, while Sergey is um, is doing that, uh, let's see. Let me make myself cameraman here. Um, so I'm going to make Sergey the displayer. Uh, so uh, while Sergey is doing what, basically what we're doing is we're removing and adding the key, and because Couchbase stores things asynchronously. Uh, we can then, um, but we have the ability through the client libraries to see when it's been persisted and when it's been replicated, which allows you to, as an application developer, decide what kind of durability you want. 
So that's what Sergey is trying to demonstrate right now. But the cluster is being okay. maybe okay. a little uh, too fast. <laughs> I'm I'm ready actually. Uh, okay. So can you see me? Okay. Yep. Uh, so I. Um, what I'm doing, uh, I'm removing uh, the key if it is exist. Uh, then uh, store the key and uh, ask observe information uh, the state uh, of the key uh, on all nodes in the cluster on uh, all nodes containing this uh, key. So the master node and the replica. Uh, what it show me? It is. Uh, First removed the key, then stored it with the cas uh, this cas value, and show us that uh, the key is persisted uh, on replica, but with another cas. It looks like a previous version uh, of the key, and on master it it has uh, found not persistent yet uh, with uh, the cas it just stored. If I retry uh, just observe command, it will show me uh, the key is persisted with uh, correct cast value. So, uh, yeah, this awesome. is what so I that's exactly what we that's exactly what we'd expect. We would expect that uh, the first time. Uh, the key is uh, sitting in memory but not persisted, and then sometime later it's uh, persisted. And um, so the cool thing to me is uh, Sergey and Trond, who actually started CBC, uh, and then Sergey picked it up and, and did quite a bit more work with it. Um, it allows you to set uh, environment variables for the cluster you're using, and it allows you to. Um, It'll pick up uh, all of the username and password stuff from environment variables. So if you're developing an application, you just kind of want to have a, a little uh, terminal you know, uh, way to kind of query what's happening inside the cluster. Uh, CBC is a great tool for that. It's based on the same lib couch base that we use uh, underneath PHP and Ruby and uh, even Couchnode and uh, Mark's uh, Perl client. Uh, so there are a number of them that are based on that. Thanks, Sergey. I want to thank you for the demo. Um, um, last other... note. Uh, oh, yeah. Last note. I, uh, I'd like to make. Uh, we have a uh, man pages uh, bo uh, both for CBC and CBCRC uh, uh, file, which described uh, how to use this cool tools. Yeah, I think Tron did that recently. I I I uh, yes. I, uh, I I did a couple minor edits, but it's awesome that we've uh, we've even done that as well. And to our knowledge, it's even Windows portable. We're working on having a regular Windows release of libcatchbase. Um, yes. So we we have we have it ported already. Uh, if you want to check that out, let us know. Um, so a couple other questions have popped up in the meantime, which is uh, very cool. So. Uh, um, Let's see. Ooh, ah, more questions have come up. Okay, uh, let me uh, let's have a look here. So, uh, one question. I just saw a question a moment ago, and now I've lost it. Um, so, one question is: I'm trying to dump all keys of an AWS Couchbase server to my local file system. It looks like the my XML serializer requires three X of file size of the JSON serializer. Um, when did we actually arrive at the JSON age? Uh, I guess he's just saying it's awesome at the end. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very cool. So, uh, uh, by all means, we're, we're doing well. Uh, I, and, yeah, you can dump uh, all the keys. Uh, sorry for the light. Sun's setting here in California. Uh, so, uh, you can dump all the keys through just creating a, a simple view. There's another question. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, let's see, I saw it a moment ago. Uh, Chris and Marty jumped in and said uh, they think the hash function is cool. Uh, and on the Hangout, uh, I saw it a moment ago. Okay, here it is. Peter Goldsmith, uh, he wrote uh, to ask, will SyncPoint have any Couchbase 2.0 integration compatibility? And if it doesn't, are there plans in the future to combine where mobile uh, TouchDB uh, is headed with where Catchbase Server 2.0 is headed? 
so Peter, thanks for the question. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit of an ongoing. Uh, it's it's a work in progress. Uh, so just being honest about where where things are. Um, we're uh, we've been wrapping up getting Catchbase Server 2.0 out the door. A lot of the great work from Marty, who uh, joined our Hangout, I think last time, and showed off some of the the tech there that he's been working on. Um, does uh, will give us the the place to be able to synchronize with. Then uh, for mobile, combining that with TouchDB, uh, that's definitely something that you know, we certainly want. Uh, we uh, sort of took the open source model of let's put some things out there early, let people see what we're working on, and you'll see more from us on, on that in a bit. So for sure, we, we see the two coming together. I can't right now say exactly how they're going to come together, so uh, hopefully that helps. All right. Uh, I'm just going to share my screens here. Uh, two things to share. Can I share multiple things or only one? Looks like only one. Um, okay. Can you guys see Visual Studio? Mm -hmm. I do. Yep. Okay, so I've, uh, I've been working on uh, basically trying to get the .NET development experience with Couchbase to be uh, as simple as you know some of the stuff that happens with uh, the uh, sorry with the Entity Framework or some of the other sort of quick code first uh, database templates. Uh, so what I've come up with are two different pieces. One inspired by Sergey, and the other uh, just sort of a, a simple Visual Studio template to get started with. So I'm in Visual Studio 2010. I'm going to create a new project. Uh, this isn't published yet, but it will be in the near future, a Couchbase MVC template. And it's just sort of a, a quick starting point to create applications using Visual Studio and Couchbase. Uh, so I'm going to create a simple to-do app to demonstrate how this works. Appropriately enough, call it simple to-do. So what this template's going to give you is a set of kind of useful boilerplate stuff to help you uh, create your Couchbase apps and Visual Studio is doing its thing. Uh, the most interesting things that you'll get uh, in particular are in this models directory. So this is a standard MVC4 application template. I've just added some glue to let you work with Couchbase. Uh, so there's a model base. So the assumption here is that you'll extend this class when you create your domain objects. And there'll be some useful things you can do with that. Uh, specifically work with this uh, repository base class, the web repository base class of T. Uh, so I won't dig into all the code here, but the basic idea here is that it's a wrapper for all of the common CRUD stuff that you'll do with Couchbase, whether it's uh, creates and gets, saves and updates, or even uh, querying views. Um, so to show you how that comes together, uh, actually one more thing to show you, the app config also comes preloaded with uh, some config for you. And I'm going to eventually get this hopefully into the public gallery um, where you can just you know, add this from online templates. Uh, but I'm just going to change this bucket to simple to do. So now what I want to do is start out by creating my model. Um, but first, I have to switch between uh, Firefox and so I think I have to share a different window. For a second. I'll try to minimize how many times I go back and forth between the two windows because I think that's can be a little dizzying. Can you guys see Firefox now? Yes, I do. Okay. So the, the default template that you get, that template that I created, just gives you a little starter kit homepage that's already been, uh, this is what you get when you install MVC4. I've just modified it, you know, obviously with a little text about Couchbase and links to some Couchbase stuff. I also want to point out that I, right now I have a simple to do Couchbase bucket, uh, and in there are no documents and no views. So the goal of what I've been working on is to uh, create a way for you to work within Visual Studio uh, and not have to do anything uh, with the admin directly and never have to write JavaScript and kind of 
give you the basic CRUD operations that you want to work with uh, in a typical you know, starter kit kind of app. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and define my model for this. And we're just creating a simple to-do list app. So I'm going to create, oops, let me go back to sharing Visual Studio, sorry. Can you see uh, the Visual Studio add new item dialog? Yes, I do. OK. So I'm going to add a new class called task. And I'm going to extend model base. And model base has a type attribute or type property, which I'm going to use to force all subclasses to have a type attribute on the JSON documents I get uh, stored in Couchbase. So in this case, I'm just going to return a type of task. And then I'm going to add some basic task-related properties. We'll have a description. We'll have notes. Due date. Oops. Yeah. Due date. And finally, uh, we'll just have a is complete. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is create a new task. So to do so, I'm going to need to create a task repository. So using my template that I'm working with here, all I have to do is add a class called task repository. that extends the web repository base, where it's generically typed to a task. And that's it for the task now. I have full CRUD data access for tasks. So now back under my controllers, I'm going to create an MVC controller with empty rewrite actions. If you're not familiar with MVC templates, you can basically get uh, you know, CRUD, op, CRUD um, actions automatically filled in for you using scaffolding. So we'll call this the tasks controller. Oops. So if you see I have uh, edit details, create an index. So I'm going to give this controller a public property of type task controller. And we'll obviously skip uh, things like dependency injection for now. Um, so we'll just create a new instance of our task controller in our default constructor here. So now what this lets me do is start working with uh, the basic plumbing that's already there in MVC to do things like oops, bind a task. So this is, if you're not familiar with MVC, what's happening here is when you do a post, uh, when you do a post on the create property names from the HTML form will map up to property names on the uh, object and then it'll automatically serialize and deserialize um, task instances based on form collection values. So all I need to do is task repository dot, uh, oops. Uh, oops, this should be task repository. So now I can create that task. Obviously, you probably want to do some validation and stuff like that, but just to show you the, the most basic stuff, what I'm going to do is then use scaffolding to create the create folder. So I'm going to add a view. And again, this all this add view, if you're not familiar with MVC, this is all boilerplate MVC template stuff. Um, so I'm going to create a create view. 
I'm going to strongly type it to my task and use the template create. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to create, uh, just because, I want, again, I want to minimize how many times I'm switching back and forth between Firefox and Visual Studio, uh, but I'm also going to create the index. So you can see what's happening after I create the task repository. I'm redirecting to the index action, which is going to just display a list of all tasks that I've created. So I'm going to pass to the view... all of the tasks that I've created. So that means I just need to go back to my tasks and create the index view. And I'll use the list template. And for those watching the broadcast, I think, John, your uh, wizards are popping up on the other screen, so we don't see those, but, um, oh. but then we do see the result. Okay. So, yeah, sorry about the wizards. If you're familiar with MVC, they're just standard wizards for creating new uh, views that kind of, when you create them, they fill in um, basically all of the HTML for rendering a list of some kind of model type or a create set of create dialogues or create um, forms for some kind of model. Uh, so now let me build this. Let me switch back to Firefox. Can everyone see Firefox? Yep, see it just fine. Okay. So if I go to Tasks, Create, so here's the form that the wizard generated. So assuming I did everything right, I should be able to create a new task. We're going to call this uh, Buy Almond Milk. So when I create this, now this is without any error handling. Uh, let me explain what's happening. It's trying to iterate over a view that doesn't exist. So if you've worked with Couchbase 2.0, you know to do queries on your data, you need to uh, create a view first. So rather, so what, what Sergey had done in the Ruby um, active record project that he worked on was, uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I saw that he basically has some mechanism for taking little JavaScript files and creating views automatically uh, when you uh, run your application for the first time is what I presume. So I wanted to do something similar within the .NET world. So if I go back to my task object, oops, let me go back to Visual Studio. Okay, so back in Visual Studio, I'm going to go to my task object, and now I'm going to decorate my task with a new, uh, this is a project that's not part of the Couchbase Core Library. This is a, a labs project. So I'm going to decorate this class oops, with a Couchbase design doc attribute. The design document is going to be named uh, tasks and the type of the item. And this is, a, oops and this is optional, uh, is going to be called the task. And I'll, I'll show you in just a second how that all comes together when we go back to Firefox. I'm also going to add another attribute called the Couchbase All View. So now if I build this, let me go back to Firefox. Did I go to Firefox? I can't tell. No, I still see you. Okay. Oh, oh wait. No, now it's on uh, Firefox. Okay. So let me let me go back to 
tasks. So you can see now that there's no error anymore. So I want to go back to the Couchbase console and look at what happened there. So just by decorating that, just by decorating that class with the attribute uh, Couchbase Design Doc, and then adding the Couchbase All view, it created a view named All, where simply what's happening is I'm looking for a doc type of task and emitting null. I mean, all we're looking at is the ID here. Um, so we're basically just looking for you know, a view that's not going to index any particular key, but give us all the IDs back. So, so then, it created the view code itself? It did. Oh, that's cool. Created and deployed the view code, so you just decorate what you need for that class, and then you've got a, a, something you can query against generated on the server, if I understand that right. Exactly. So and it's, there's, there's a little more to it that's a little more interesting. So, um, so you'll notice that when I, rent, when I reload this page, then the view shows up. So, oops, uh, sorry, it wasn't the wrong window. So when I reload this page, then the actual data in the view showed up. Uh, the reason for that is I have, let me go back to Visual Studio. Uh, so Visual Studio, I mean, sorry, um, so the view I have in my task controller is get all. And right now, there's no stale mode option set. So it's allowing for eventually consistent views. Oops. What did that do? Well, John's doing that just to describe this. By default in Couchbase, um, we, we uh, have our views are eventually consistent, meaning that um, if you do a data update, it'll be a little while later that that would actually uh, get included. There's some more detail to that. But there are times that you want to update a data item and you want that to be immediately in the view. And so then what we'll set is uh, what we call uh, stale equal to false. And each client SDK is a different way of setting. So John was uh, doing that right there. Yep. So uh, can everyone see Chrome now? Um, so now if I go back and I create another item, it's ASP.NET taking its uh, time after rebuilding. For those of us who do .NET, we know that sometimes those rebuilds are painful. Uh, so now, let's see, buy some batteries, get some C batteries. We'll make this due on the 14th. I know these are all past due dates, but obviously I was working on this in the past. Uh, so I create that. Oops, did I not compile that? Oh. Uh, I don't think, sorry, I don't think I actually built that um, last time when I, after I made the stale equals false change. So I'll create one more here. Finish demo. Right. So you can see that now the, the data came right back. But there's also something else strange going on with the demo. You'll see that I'm, it's sorting right now by ID. So the, the due dates are 17, 15, 14. So I want to be able to sort this, um, and it's not going to work directly. The, because I don't have an index on the date, I can't just uh, use that same query that I already have. So what I need to do now is go back to Visual Studio. And go back to my task class. So if I go to due date, I can now say Couchbase view key. So this is a key to a view. The view name is by date. Uh, the property to index on is the due date. And that's the JSON property, not the um, that's the, the property in the JSON document, not the property in the class. 
Uh, and again, it, it'll default to the name of the class if you haven't done any, the name of the property, if you haven't uh, changed the property names of your classes to the JSON properties. So I'm going to build that and go back to, oops, actually, uh, let me stay in Visual Studio for a second. So I've created, um, so now um, what's going to happen is I'm going to create a new view called by date. So over in my task repository, I need to create a new method called, it's going to be an enumeral, enumerable list of tasks called get all by date. Uh, and we'll just make this simple. The web repository base has a protected method called get view so that your repositories can just get the view back and then apply um, the standard view parameter options on them. So then I'm going to go back to my tasks controller and instead of returning my get all method, oops, I'm going to return get all by date. Let me build that. Go back to Chrome. Did I show Firefox? Firefox. Too many browsers open. All do the same thing. So now you can see that the due date is the sort key being applied here. And if I go back to the views window, you'll see that I have a new method called, or a new view called by date, where I'm checking for a type of task, checking that the due date exists as a property, and emitting the due date as a, uh, the due date as a key. So, one other thing with the, a couple other quick things with the, um, these attributes that I want to show you just to show you kind of the interesting things you can do with them. So let's say you wanted to have a composite due date uh, and is complete key. So I can create another couch base view called by date and is complete. And the property is going to be due date. The order is going to be zero. So what I do is I come to the is complete property now. Add this, an attribute with the view of the same name, except now is complete is the document key, and I want to admit is complete as a second index or as a second item in the array for the key. Um, I can also, let's just imagine a somewhat contrived scenario where I have a user or an owner associated with this task. And let's say that the owner, this is actually the idea of another document of, of type owner. I can apply the Couchbase collated view key where the view name would be all with owners. Uh, let's say the relation name is owner. So we have owner documents. Owner ID. And then uh, let's say we also want to admit um, the description of the task. Let me compile these and switch over to Firefox. So give this a second to start over. So 
So now if I go back to my view, view uh, window here, you'll see now that I have a couple other different uh, views. So I have by date and is complete. And you'll see what's happening here is I'm emitting the task, or checking for the type, uh, and checking for due date and is complete properties, and then emitting a composite key of due date and is complete. And the other, uh, this was, again, this doesn't really exist, but this, this is the case. If you want to do view collation, um, which I won't get into exactly what that is right now, um, but what you'll see is I'm emitting, uh, there are no owner documents in here, so this wouldn't actually do anything, so I can't really run it. Um, but if you wanted to have a collated view, you can uh, use the collated attribute to get that. Um, but what's happening is basically take one type, take the related type, uh, and then emit it as a, uh, a key in the same view, but with a special uh, marker so you know that zeros are tasks and the related tasks are uh, the owners. Actually, I did these backwards. Owner ID should have been the owner ID should have been the key that maps up to the meta ID. Yeah, just want to make a brief note that um, the dev guide uh, in, on catchbasic.com slash docs uh, covers uh, some of these things like view collations and compound keys and so forth. Obviously, John is an advanced user, uh, but it's a, a good uh, good demonstration of how at least uh, I think this is awesome, right? In the .NET client, you can just do some decoration on your classes, and you have a good way of querying them without having to get into uh, lots of low-level detail or write your own JavaScript. All right, so just the uh, the final couple minutes just to finish the, um, for completeness sake here, I'm going to create two, two more views. I'll create edit using the edit scaffolding. We'll create, I'll create a, another view. Um, called details and the little windows that you don't see popping up apparently are just little wizards that ask you for a type and what action to do uh, what, what action to fill in the, the templates with So now I have all my views. I can go back to my task controller and just write a few lines of code, and then I'm done here. Uh, so if I go to, so we've done index. So details, all I need to do is say bar task equals task repository dot get D. I need to change ID to a string. The default templates for controllers assume integer IDs. So that'll fill in our details. Oops, did I? And then send the task to the view for edit. Do the same thing. Send the task to the view. Then to save out, just do a task repository dot update task. And then finally delete. Again, we'll and then just remove here. So assuming that all of my copy and pasting and rapid type changing worked. The final part of the demo here is to 
run this back on Firefox. Compile on demand? Uh, no, but it feels like that, doesn't it? <laughs> well, the, the views are being compiled on demand. I guess that's uh, to yeah. be fair, Microsoft. Um, so now if I click on edit, oops, hmm. edit. The ID doesn't seem to be, well, the scaffolding doesn't look like it picked up the right thing. Uh, let me take one second. If I can't figure that out, I'll just let that go. Um, okay. Give it a shot, John. Yeah, the index. So basically, in the last 20 minutes, what we've seen is um, start a new project, define a new uh, .NET MVC application built around this idea of a domain object called a task. Uh, John initially built uh, just the stuff for creating tasks. Then he built the stuff for entering new tasks. Now he's built the stuff for editing tasks. Uh, so in less than 20 minutes, with an occasional exception, stack trace, and lots of Windows switching, uh, we almost have a working app. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why the uh, the IDs aren't showing up. This is it's an MVC mistake I'm making, not a Couchbase mistake. So I won't. Uh, yeah, I won't uh, ask everyone to watch me debug that. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, um, you know, all this, I I'm going to have the Couchbase uh, view creation library. It's called the Couchbase model views. Um, that, that'll that uh, get forked to Couchbase lab soon. Right now it's under Jay Zablocki on GitHub. Um, and that'll be on NuGet as well, along with the latest uh, version of Couchbase client. And spatial view creation is also uh, supported by the model view library, so pretty much all the basic view stuff you need to do, you can create there. Very cool. Thanks, John. No uh, so I want to mention just a couple quick things before we uh, close up. So I did check. There are no more questions, but obviously if you have one, please post, uh, and we'll get to it right away. You can also join the Hangout directly if you'd like. Uh, so Tony said he's just here to see the demo. <laughs> so, um, but what I wanted to mention briefly is, uh, if I can, that uh, we're uh, that there are a few other events coming up here uh, soon. Uh, some in uh, different places across the globe. So uh, next up, uh, in the first week of December, we have CouchConf Austin. Uh, and there, uh, this is the first of what we're calling Couchbase clusters. And so the idea is that we have a, uh, we take some of the, the content directly from uh, CouchConf um, that we had in San Francisco and Berlin uh, and other locations around the globe. We're bringing those to simply other venues uh, across the, the U.S. and the world. So CouchConf Austin is coming up on uh, December 3rd. Also uh, worth mentioning is uh, Couch. CouchConf uh, North Carolina is coming up on December 5. Uh, so do keep uh, keep in mind that those those are both uh, coming up. So if you're in um, Austin uh, or in North Carolina, I believe the venue is yeah, it's, uh, Raleigh. Uh, so a um, couple opportunities for you to come out and meet some folks. I think John's going to be there, uh, which is great. Uh, so you'll get an opportunity to uh, see the demo in person, maybe. <laughs> and then uh, we also have, uh, we did um, um, delay uh, CouchConf Israel. So uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes glued to that page, uh, just with uh, some of what's going on in Israel uh, right now. You know, we, we hope all of that gets resolved uh, shortly, and then we'll be able to come over and meet with some folks there as well. Um, so, so with that... Uh, I want to jump back and turn off my screen share. Let me check once more for any questions. Oh, there is one, or at least there's a comment. Let's see what it is. Tug said, uh, great job, John. Apps development looks really easy in Visual Studio, even for a Java guy. Uh, Thanks, oh, sir. 
<laughs> so uh, there's also uh, uh, Ahmed Janim said, uh, thanks for answering my response and sorry for not being clear about real-time response. What I meant is since views need to be indexed, what's a better way for to use them for better performance since it's serving a social game? So making sure I'm getting the right result at the right time with the best performance I can get. So Ahmed, that's, yeah, so John was right on with his uh, answer earlier. The idea is that you want to query views with uh, the default, which is eventually consistent, and that'll give you the best performance for those scenarios where you need uh, a change. That that uh, the way I think of it is uh, as actors or threads. If and one actor within a distributed system makes a change and then needs to make a view uh, query after that and needs that change that they just made to be part of that view query uh, guaranteed then you would make this daily equals false uh, kind of query. So there is a trade-off for that. Um, the default with Couchbase is that we're eventually consistent for secondary indexes which for lots of social game cases like you're bringing up think of leaderboards and things of that nature uh, you don't necessarily need to have that um, directly in, uh, in your query. Uh, one technique I should mention really briefly is, especially for social games, sometimes you actually, for that user who made that change, you keep that state locally. So think of the leaderboard case. The view query may actually be using the eventually consistent uh, change, but if I just recently set the new high score uh, on that client, I may go ahead and, uh, and, and update that locally. So I'll get the view results, but then I may actually insert another record knowing that not too long from now it will be part of that view uh, directly. So that's sort of a, a technique for uh, giving um, different views of the same data set at the same time. So uh, thanks, Ahmed, for uh, joining and, and watching and um, asking questions. Really appreciate it. Um, so we are now two minutes over on time, and we actually started on time today. So I want to thank everyone who's uh, joined the broadcast. Uh, thanks, John, for doing the demo. Sergey, good to see uh, the demo and uh, the nice uh, winter beard for those uh, evenings in Minsk. Uh, so let's see, what's the temp there right now? Uh, uh, it's about five, my, minus five Celsius. Oh, no, according, well, then uh, my little dashboard's off. Uh, <laughs> so for me, it's about, uh, let me see, what is it here right now? It's probably about 20 Celsius right, right now <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> so, uh, hey, Tony, thanks for joining. Good to see you here. And uh, and I know you've got, uh, you'll, you'll pepper us with questions occasionally on the forums and on the IRC channel. So uh, now we've put some faces together, John and Tony, for sure, have uh, been working together. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the broadcast, and we'll see you next time in a couple weeks. Hey, one final note for you, uh, sign us off, Matt. Sure. So just to, to save a little face here, that didn't work because I have a, an old build of my uh, Couchbase DLL that doesn't have the underscore ID ID issue. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've been yeah. making some changes there. Yeah, so it's a little out of date. It'll, it'll work when it's released. Awesome. I know it will. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks, Sergey. Good to see you, Tony. And, and uh, we lost Mark, but I'm sure he's watching. So <laughs> we'll see you all next time on the next broadcast, probably in a couple weeks. Keep an eye on the Google Plus page and hope to see you at a CouchCon. See you. Bye. Bye.